the very first thing the network said to us was, don't worry about stars. You don't need stars. You don't need name casting. You don't need stunt casting. You find who you want to bring these characters to life because you've got books and you've got a genre that people are already into. And so we've got our hook. The show is the hook. This is one of the best casts I've ever had. I mean, I've been, and I have been super lucky in my career to have you know, such good ensemble cast. You know, I struck gold with the Dawson's Creek cast, and I feel like this one is another example of striking gold. There's nothing really glamorous about the audition life. If you're an actor watching this, you know. So, Grams tells me how I'm psychic because we're descendants of the Celtic Druids. I know. It's crazy, right? I wasn't buying it either until I remembered my own. The whole auditioning process was pretty, uh, it was long and difficult and, they really made us work for it. Oh man, it was definitely a big process. It's one of the most exciting slash nerve wracking things <laughs> ever. That's the crazy thing about the, this job and the business. It could just like, everything just changes so quickly. The stakes are really high. Cause you realize if I screw this up, I'm not gonna get this show. The whole casting process of uh, Vampire Diaries has been interesting. Went in, you know, you hope for the best, you, you do the work outside the room. It's not something like, oh, I got discovered at a supermarket. <laughs> I envy, I envy the actors that have it like that. No, I just auditioned, like the hundreds of other people. I knew I'd find you here holding court. When I f first heard that they were casting for Vampire Diaries, I knew it was based off a book and I went and I bought it. I read the first four novels. <laughs> I really wanted to get that source material. You know, I really wanted to make sure that I had as much sort of knowledge as I could possibly attain. I actually didn't know about the Vampire Diaries series. I, I don't know how everyone else seemed to, seemed to know about it. I'm sorry, Jenna. What about your sister? Casting the rest of our supporting characters, believe it or not, the ensemble was very, very, very easy. They had all the girls audition for Elena regardless, just to kind of categorize where they wanted to put each actress later on uh, when they were breaking everything down. I think they did something similar with the boys as well. You okay? Were you following me? No, I, I mean, yeah, sort of, but I, I saw you follow. I actually originally went in for Damon and I got done reading it and Kevin was like, that was great, but why are you here for Damon? Zach came in and wasn't really right for Stefan, definitely wasn't right for Damon, and then we said he should be Tyler because Tyler's a jerk. You know, he's a real badass. Get away. And to see Zach do that would be awesome. After some talks with Kevin, I told him that I really liked Matt and, because I haven't got to play that many nice guys. We looked at those pretty blue eyes and the way he smiles and we said, okay, that can be Matt. <laughs> Absolutely. Vic, what attacked you in the woods? My cousins told me that Matt in the books was a nice guy, but like very soft. And so I didn't really want to read the books and kind of have like a predetermined way of Matt. I wanted to maybe, you know, have Matt still be a really nice guy that's endearing and honest, but also at the same time have a strong backbone. Who knew you and me? Well, who knew you could be fun? <laughs> Candace Akala came in and read for Caroline, and we went, oh, God, of course. Like, how could you make any other choice? You got all that <laughs> in one day. Oh, I got all that between bells after third period. Candace is such a wonderful find, and she's such a talented actress, and she just keeps showing us that she's capable of comedy, she's capable of drama. She has that ability to sort of make you laugh and cry in the same line of dialogue, and when an actress can do that, she's special. That's true. I'm shallow. I am worse than shallow. <laughs> I'm a kiddie pool. <laughs> yeah, I know what's wrong with me, but what's with you? So your your mom, your dad, your uh, golden retriever of a brother? I think Stephen McQueen came in and read for the role of Jeremy on the second day of casting and had the part pretty much once he walked out of the room. Come on, stop. You gotta you gotta chill out, okay? I love the character Jeremy. He had all these pent up issues. He had addiction problems. He was uh, fighting against the world at all times. That was one of the simpler roles to cast. Walk away, Gilbert. It's your final warning. No, this is your final warning, Dick. I'm sick of watching you play Vicky. If you hurt her one more time, I swear to God, I will kill you. The Black Crow brings death. No, wait. Katarina Graham, who's just this like bubbly light of wonderful, beautiful energy, came in and she had that part right away. Yes! You should go. Don't sit home. You're doing good. Keep it up. 
I sort of got right onto the tail end of the auditions for The Vampire Diaries. We thought that all the roles had been cast. Sarah Canning, who plays Aunt Jenna, read on tape in Vancouver, and we cast her off the tape because she was so good. Four months ago, I didn't even know how to take care of a plant. Okay, so I'm, I'm not pretending to be some expert on parenting. Because, let's face it, I'm better at being the cool aunt who looks the other way. But the jig is up. School started, and I know how it can go one way or the other for someone like you. So we're gonna go textbook on this one. Julie kind of really pushed for me. I, <laughs> I owe it all to Julie and Kevin, really. I'm not gonna invite you in. Forget it. Come on, Jenna. It's me. <sighs> Jesus, Tyler. What the hell's that? Sorry. I went in a few times in the audition room, met with Kevin and Julie, and discussed certain roles and where they thought that I felt in better. Michael Trevino's a terrific actor. He's very skilled, he's very talented, he's very well trained, and he's capable of almost anything. Michael Trevino, when he came in and read for Tyler, he's just perfect. He embodies that arrogant, privileged bully really well. And it wasn't, you know, given to me. I definitely had a fight for Tyler. Don't look so down. You can have it when I'm done. <laughs> so we had this wonderful easy time casting the rest of the show. And then there was Elena, Stefan, and Damon. We didn't want to necessarily cast the boys until we knew for sure we had the girl. And we couldn't completely cast the girl until we sort of knew we had the boys. And so it was one of those, which comes first. It was definitely a long process. Yeah, it's trying to be an understatement. <laughs> Nina Dobrev was the first person who had her part of the threesome. Once we sort of zeroed in on her, it was done. It was done. She was Elena. When I first got the part and it was announced that I was playing Elena, so many people were outraged that I wasn't blonde. And, and they were saying, is she going to dye her hair? Like, this can't be possible. L.J. Smith, the novelist of The Vampire Diaries, spends a lot of time talking about Elena's beautiful blonde hair. And everybody who knew the books first always saw Elena with blonde hair. Well, not exactly the case right here. And truthfully, when we set out to cast Elena, we were hoping we would find a beautiful blonde actress to become our Elena. I absolutely 100% understand why fans were upset that Elena wasn't blonde. Um, that being said, we have to build a television series that can run for many years, and it hinges around the actress who brings Elena to life. It was a sacrifice that had to be made, and we're not sorry. You need to chill yourself. Chill myself? Oh, okay, I, I get it. It's, it's stoner talk. Dude, you're so cool. When Nina came in and sort of showed us what she could do, then it, we're just like, she's the girl to beat. And no blonde-haired actress walked in and beat her. We knew how special Nina was, and, and there was no looking back. And then... Damon and Stefan had to be cast. We couldn't find the chemistry, we couldn't find the right, the right actors to embody either of those roles. We had sort of seen a lot of actors, and no one, we could not find a Damon. Somewhere in the midst of all that, we got a call saying that Ian Sarmaholder would be interested in talking about the role of Damon. His whole journey of being cast was, you know, another whole story. It was about seven days or 10 days of just really intense meetings and Nail chewing and because when you want something you want it. Why are you here? I can ask you the very same question, but I'm fairly certain that your answer could be summed up in one little word. Elena. He came in and he met with us and we talked to him and we were convinced this was our guy, total home run. And then he went in front of the studio and the network to get the job officially. Kevin and Julie in the studio, they were all fighting. For, uh, who, for us, who they, who they wanted. But the minute we cast him, everybody came out of the woodwork. Press, bloggers, internet, like, oh my god, perfect choice. And I think that set everybody's mind at ease. You must be Elena. I'm Damon, Stefan's brother. He didn't tell me he had a brother. Well, Stefan's not one to brag. Please, come. I'm sure Stefan will be along any second. He is so good in this part that Seeing, thinking of anybody else in that role, you just can't even, can't even consider it. Hello, brother. Damon. The very last role to be cast of our series was Stefan. For the pilot and the TV series to work, 
the relationship between Elena and Stefan had to be magic. It's such an ordeal. We had Nina read opposite probably 30, 40, 50, I don't even know, too many different guys. I'm sorry, were you going somewhere? Yeah, I was just heading to see some friends, but did you want to come? Sure. It was quite the process. We saw Paul Wesley probably, uh, you know, I think he came in nine times. I just remember he had this sort of old soul, historic feeling about him. He's very brooding and very, you just know that he's lived. Originally, they asked me uh, to read for Damon. And I, you know, and I gladly, you know, went to read for Damon, but I always had this, like, in my mind, Stefan was a character that I wanted to play. Oh, hi. Uh, sorry, I was, uh, I was about to knock. So then he came in and read for Stefan halfway through casting for Peter Roth at Warner Brothers, and Peter said, that's your guy. Okay, like, is that our guy? And Kevin's like, I don't know, is that our guy? I'm like, he is our guy, <laughs> like, we gotta shoot. It was about a week in that Paul Wesley did his first scene. It's the scene where Elena was running in the cemetery, and he's there out of nowhere. Were you following me? and the sun's just hitting him so perfectly and his eyes are beautifully green and he's just staring at her and she's staring up at him. I'm Elena. I'm Stefan. I know, we have history together. It was phenomenal, it was phenomenal. Kevin and I both went, he's our guy. He is our guy, oh my God, he is our guy. The look on her face, the way they connected in those moments, that's what worked for me. I said to myself, this is, this is phenomenal. There is real chemistry between Paul Wesley and Nina Dobrev. Frankly, I can only apologize to the world for it taking us that long to even realize how spectacular he was. Are you okay? You should go. Really, it's nothing. It really worked out in a way that it was kind of like the, the universe and the stars lining up. It's just been a, a wonderful experience, uh, you know, from day one. So it couldn't have been a better, a better outcome. We've really sort of come into our own, in a sense. Everything just sort of came together. I mean, the rest is history.